So as part of like this discussion uh, where we end up talking about the impact of society and the kinds of strains and pressures that we face, we can probably think about a few things that kind of come up, right? You know, where we, you know, we do have, you know, family considerations, right? We do maybe, you know, want to have an education of some kind, right? We're probably told, right, that we should, you know, hard work and persevere um, in society. But the big overarching thing that has probably been, you know, passed on for over, you know, for eons, right, is to make money, right? And not only to make money, but become wealthy while doing it. Uh, if possible, right? I think in most of our society, especially in early days of, uh, you know, like American, right? Like it was, that was really seen as like the dream, right? So it didn't really matter if you were a good, you know, you could have, let's say you also want to be, you know, a religious leader. Or if you also were, you know, someone who cared about, you know, charitable efforts or something like that. All of those things are noble, right? But there seems to be, in the way that our society is structured, a preference and an emphasis, preference, emphasis on attaining wealth. Uh, becoming, you know, hugely successful and people then view you as a success because of your wealth acquisition, right? So we'll call that a chief goal in American society. So goal in American society is to make dollar dollar bills, y'all. So with that, then, you know, what, how does this like lead to anything, right? So how does this uh, lead to like any predictions about crime or, you know, any speculation about behavior? So the first like big important one that comes out is that when we have like this goal uh, that's put into place, right? You know, this is something that is universally applied. So it doesn't matter if you come from the poorest of the poor or if you're an immigrant of some kind and you, you know, came from like a whole different um, situations where there's not a lot of opportunity, right? You're, it, everyone's expected to get this right. And we are sort of taught and socialized, right, that the, you know, uh, product of hard work and determination, you know, means you can make it, right? So even though, like, most people, you know, are not going to become fabulously wealthy, uh, you know, in a, in a lifetime, right? Um, it, it, you know, it's really seen as something that I'll get there one day or I need to try. You know, it's sort of, there was, like, this meme that went around that was, like, you know, Joe Biden's, like, tax plan was, like, yeah, you know, I'm going to increase taxes if you make, like, 400K or more. Meanwhile, like, everyone who makes, like, 35K is, like, freaking out, like, ah! Because they think, like, maybe one day I will make 400K, even though that's, you know, for most people in society, like, exceedingly unlikely, right? So this goal then, you know, puts this pressure is that our determination of success is often uh, measured by wealth acquisition or, you know, the amount of money that you have. In some cases, it might be your ability to own a home or to live the fabulous lifestyles of the rich and famous and stuff like that. Uh, I think that was an old MTV show or something, like Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. It was just about, like, complete glorification of wealth. Sort of like uh, Cribs on MTV, uh, for those of you who know what I'm talking about. Or Pimp My Ride uh, back in the day, you know, just to have, like, <laughs> the blingiest of bling stuff. Uh, to commit, uh, to really demonstrate, you know, your wealth and successes through items, right? So with this, then, you know, what ends up happening, right? There's a key, like, little bit of function, right? So when we think about our society, then, you know, there are accepted means of getting this goal. And that's mainly, you know, we view education as a way to better our lives, uh, but really we're doing it for more money, right? We, you know, we do, you know, value, you know, hard, you know, working hard. You know, we do value, uh, you know, moving up a corporate ladder. 
because it's all in chase of this overarching societal goal of, uh, you know, attaining wealth, right? Now, the other little truism, right, that often comes up is that the opportunities... to achieve wealth, or at least like the kind of wealth that is, you know, fictionalized and, you know, mytholo mythologized and stuff like that, um, are not evenly distributed. You know, it's going to be a lot harder if you uh, came from an inner city school that is failing in terms of like the building case can't attract good teachers or aren't, aren't good programs. Um, in order to enhance learning, you know, people don't want to like live there. There's no tax base, right? That's a lot harder than someone who you know, comes from a wealthy family who went to a private school, has a high, has the best teachers, pays them well, and they're all happy and stuff like that. So, or if you, you know, are, you know, in an area where, you know, there's, you're not concerned, your family background is not concerned about wealth or something like that. So as a kid, you don't have to work. You can focus more on school or other activities. You know, you go into a better college because of that. You know, who knows, right? Or if you're not, you know, always out scrounging, you know, for food or something like that. Um, you know, the, the life experiences uh, in this country are not the same. Yet we try to hold everyone to the same standard, right? Where we think, Oh, you know, this is, uh, everyone should be able to do this, so I'm not, why aren't you uh, doing it? it? It's sort of what happens. So this introduces, you know, a problem, right, is that what we end up seeing is that, you know, we see that people, that crime occurs, and one way to think about it is through an inability to achieve goals in society, in this case, managing wealth. So inability to achieve the goal in society and a lack of opportunity. So what ends up happening in these situations is that if we have this inability, we show like this, uh, we're not able to achieve what kind of item, right? This leads to something that is called uh, classical strain theory. Classic strain. So the core argument uh, is already that I've already talked about, right? Is that we have these, you know, exceeding goals to achieve wealth in society. Opportunity is not, um, you know, evenly distributed, and it may seem that the this pressure to achieve wealth is, you know, stifling. There's an overemphasis on it. And it kind of become it permeates through you know everything right. So classic strain takes note that there is this existing pressure. So there's this existing pressure for wealth, and as a result of this existing pressure, right, people. Uh, you know, oh, and also with a lack of means or at least differential opportunity um, leads to uh, adaptations in behavior. So this is basically, when we th think about ad adaptations, it's like how humans... Uh, shape their behavior uh, to deal with the goal of society and uh, their opportunity. So the big thing to keep in mind uh, for this, right, is that if we think about this in terms of a decision tree, let's, uh, let's visualize that, right? So if you are here, you know, and you know that there is up above you, we'll use this green cloud, right? It surrounds you and it's dollars, right? Because that's all we're told that we really should focus on because that's how we'll end up Judging someone is of, you know, good effort or uh, good merit and things like that, right? So in this case, then, 
the decision tree can go in a couple of ways, right? So pathway one, right, is conformity. So people who conform, right, uh, you know, do a couple different things, right? So on this conformity train, they accept uh, the goal of society. So in this case, then, um, you know, we're saying that it's okay to make a lot of money. It's okay to do this. That's something we should strive for. And I'm going to move in such a way where, uh, you know, I'm going to follow accepted means, right? So I'm going to work hard. I'm going to get an education. I'm going to do whatever I can to get wealth. And I may not get there, right? But that's how I'm, I'm going to, you know, you know, go, go about this goal, right? So that's one decision path. On the other end, then, um, you know, we have a new path where people are going to innovate. Innovators also accept the goal of society and that making wealth, but they're willing to break the rules, right? In the sense, then, uh, what they're saying is that, you know, it is okay for me to maybe do some crime or do some nefarious things because all that really matters is getting a lot of money. And if I make a lot of money, people aren't really going to care otherwise because they're going to think that I have some value, which may or may not be true, right? So that is uh, kind of the, the tricky pickle, oh, if you will, of how the guess is that if you are willing to break the rules to get in order to achieve wealth, in some cases, that's seen as, um, you know, a good thing, right? What ends up happening is that when you're, you know, willing to break these rules, then that is when you become more likely to commit crime, right? So you're almost like willing to do anything. And so this pathway is seen as how people get into crime. It's sort of like this kernel pathway where people are willing to adapt and break rules, rob, steal, uh, hunt, cheat, whatever, right? in order to uh, make something like that happen. Different pathway though is that not everyone is going to accept this right in some way and some people become you know the ritualist right. You know these people they're not they don't accept the goal right they feel like it's unattainable so the idea of getting a lot of like wealth in society is like yeah, it's probably not going to happen for me, dog. You know, I'm like, I'm a, maybe I'm being realistic about it. Maybe I'm just not like caught up in that. But, um, you know, it's just not something that is seen as, you know, like attainable, right? Having said that, though, they aren't willing to commit crime to do it. Um, and so the, this is going to be more people who are, um, they're, they're still willing to follow. They're still willing to work hard. Um, they're still, you know, getting a job and education. But the idea of becoming fabulously wealthy is just sort of like not ingrained, right? It's not seen as something that, um, you know, folks are really wanting to do or benefit to succeed with. Retreatists take a different role and they are checked out, really. So they, they don't really, you know, they don't really believe in the goal. Um, they don't believe the means either. And so they sort of just like do none of those, right? And this is the kind of group that was believed in classical, under classical strain theory to be the reason why uh, people uh, do not um, become like drifters and stuff like that because they're completely checked out. And lastly... There are rebels, and they say, we need new goals, and we need new means of achieving whatever these new goals are. Right? We don't necessarily have to you know, adapt them in order to, uh, we don't have to adapt, we have to adapt new rules and in means in order to achieve whatever the new goals are. So this could be, you know, literally anything really. There's not really a lot of um, breakdown for this. Okay.